She said she was desperate for it, but didn't know how to bring up something like this. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Ara Zone Stories. Today we have a story where this man trusted his gut and made a quick decision about his unfaithful wife. Let's see what really happened. I'm incredibly emotional and in shock, and I don't know if this will come out clearly, but I have to get it out now. I love my wife more than anything on this planet. We have had ups and downs like any other marriage, but for me, it was all ups really. She is incredible. She is the most intelligent person I have ever known firsthand. She is gorgeous. She is a wonderful mother, and an even better wife. She is an unfaithful woman though, apparently. In our first year of marriage, I found messages on her phone from some guy. She told me that it was just a friend she had met at the gym. The messages had been vague, but he had mentioned his wife and had said something along the lines of, use this email so my wife doesn't find out. Obviously something else was going on. She denied it and said they had talked about possibly meeting up to mess around, but that it never happened. Like an idiot, I accepted what she said as truth. I dug a bit and realized she was telling half-truths. We caressed and made up and she promised to be more honest with her urges and feelings. She has a past history of mistreat and has a lot of physical problems in general. We go through some other external issues and like I said, I had no idea what was really going on here for years. Cue to two nights ago. She is in the shower and her phone starts buzzing. I check her messages, I know, douche move, but I have had a really hard time trusting her since that first year, even though she seemed fine. It's a text from some guy talking about how he couldn't wait to force his stuff down her throat again. Okay, she is cheating on me. Okay, this is bad. She gets out of the shower and I confront her. Her eyes glaze over and she just falls to the floor. She is sobbing hysterically. I asked her who he was and what he was talking about. She continued to sob for a good 10 minutes before looking me in the eye and confessing to me what she has been up to for the last three years. Jesus, she has a problem. She needs to have bedroom activity with strangers in order to get off. She confesses that over the course of our marriage, she has slept with 25 different people, men and women. She has been meeting these people on Craigslist for years and having encounters of varying degrees with all of them. My heart has been in my stomach ever since. I tried to just listen and not ask questions because I was so overwhelmed with the info she had given me. I have always kind of known that something has been going on, but I forced myself to believe that we were okay. What am I supposed to do with this knowledge? Apparently, she has been so guilt-ridden that that is the true reason she drinks a lot. I thought she was numbing herself because of a loss she experienced, but no, it's because she has been doing bedroom activity with random internet strangers for years. Jesus, I left her there and told her I needed to think about all of this. I know the most common advice will be to leave her, lawyer up, blah blah blah, but that does nothing to help me work out in my mind what is wrong with her. How could she do this? How could she ruin everything? I don't think there is any way I can get over this, but I also really do love her and know that she has issues that need to be resolved. I'm just so lost right now. I'm furious. I'm utterly disgusted. I'm hurt. Please, help me not jump in front of a bus right now. Edit. I feel loads better than an hour ago, so thank you all for your advice. I think I am going to call her tonight and find out if she is willing to get help. I think I may even show her this post and all of your responses so she knows she needs to get help. I love her and I want to help her. I will update if you guys want me to. Thanks again. I have a lot to go over and think about tonight. I took some time yesterday to just reflect on my life and marriage. I read the remaining replies as well. I also spoke to her in great length over the phone as I can't seem to face her right now. I asked her explain, in detail, exactly what happened to her as a kid. I wanted to make sure that I fully understood. It was bad far, far worse than she ever even proposed. I now have those thoughts and images to process. I asked her point blank if she was willing to get help. She said she was desperate for it, but didn't know how to bring up something like this. She is ashamed, afraid, alone and sorry. I know she is sorry. I am fully aware that this is not my fault but I am also now taking responsibility in my part of all of this. I am by no means justifying what she did, only saying that I had a role to play in her not being able to trust and confide in myself. I have not been the best partner. I ignored the signs. I ignored her a lot really. I left her alone a lot. I emotionally abandoned her for two of the three years we have been married. 
There is a lot more that gets too detailed, and I wouldn't want my friends or family to know about all of this, so I'll skip it. These are not things she said to me in the last few days. These are things she has been expressing directly to me for years. I always made an excuse as to why she wasn't put first in my life. I'm not saying I deserve this. I'm just saying that I truly know in my heart that I have not helped her or been a very good husband and that is why she didn't bring it up or ask for help from me. I never made her or her wants and desires a priority for me. She did tell me the bedroom activity she was interested in. She has even been specific with her wants and desires, now that I am thinking about it. I always told her I would try to do the things she asked, and then never followed through. I too, have been very selfish. I made vows, yet have not taken them or her seriously for years. I'm not giving her a free pass with this information. I told her that I will not divorce her, and that she will need to seek help as soon as possible for herself. I have taken my STD tests, and I am just waiting for results in 7 to 10 days. I will retest in 6 months, as they said I should. If she remains in therapy and remains transparent with all of her actions, including giving me full access to her phone and emails, I will stick around while she gets the help she needs. Will we be a happy family again? No, I'm pretty sure that I know that the life I thought I had, and the wife I thought I had was a lie. I can only hope to rebuild a new one. Will I remain with her after she gets the help she needs? Probably not. I will stick it out for as long as I can as I don't know what feelings, ideas and thoughts will surface in the next few months or weeks or days. I guess only time can tell. I will update if something significant surfaces, or in time. Thank you all for caring so much about a perfect stranger, but thank you all more for caring about her, even though she did these awful things. She is still a person, a good one at that. I do not judge her wholly for this one thing, even though it is huge. She is broken, but she is human as am I, and I couldn't live with myself if I abandoned her at this stage. So again, thanks for the reach outs. Edit. Okay, I get that people think I'm an idiot. I'm just trying to get through this. My opinions on the matter may and well change down the road. I'm just doing what I think is right for myself and for her at the moment. Since the last update, I have gone home and we had another very long conversation about her past and what she thinks she needs as far as help goes. After the last update, I was feeling really, I don't know, wrong. Something just didn't feel right. I am so glad I trusted my instincts and really listened to some of things you all brought up about making sure her past was legit. She's going over the mistreat again. I'm asking questions this time because I failed to do that the first and only time it was brought up. I am sitting there, with my eyes closed, just listening to her explain it and trying to come to terms with what I'm hearing, when she says something that catches my attention more. She was talking about how she was picked up by these guys. Originally, I could have sworn she said she knew one of them and voluntarily walked to his house, where he and his friends waited. Without getting into all of her personal details here, let me just say that I am pretty done doubting my own sanity in all of this. I asked her, hey, didn't you say you knew, and you walked to his house that day? I could have sworn that's what you told me. She looked like a doe in headlights. She fumbled over herself a few times before just going silent. I point blank asked her if she was ever really mistreated. She goes on me and throws a, how dare you even ask me that. In there, I seriously cannot trust a word she says about anything. She proceeded to scream and yell at me for I don't know how long. All I did was stand and listen. She got in my face and was just so, so angry. How could she, after all of this, be angry at me? I don't know her. I don't know a single real thing about this woman that I have been married to for years. She continued to throw a fit and scream, fine, no, I was not mistreated. Is that what you wanted to hear? I asked her if she was sorry for what she has done to me and our family and even herself. She said she was, but that she was tired of living a lie and just can't stay faithful to anyone. She just wants to mess around for the rest of her life. Fine, really, whatever. I told her I wanted a divorce. She didn't even fight it. She packed a bag and left me here with my son. I sent her a text telling her not to come back and that I'd see her in court. I can't believe I was so stupid and blind. I can't believe I actually loved this woman. I can't believe she got me. I measure the value of love on whom and what I love, not the other way around. I loved her. Hopefully that says loads more about my character than hers. With that being said, I'm done. If she goes about her side of this divorce civilly then I won't sue her for infidelity, which is still illegal in my state. I'm going for full custody 
because she is a lot more deranged than she showed me before. I feel like a total idiot, but I am so 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 glad that I really allowed myself to trust my gut and follow all of the good advice that you all gave me. I'm sorry to say that this new news changed everything. I feel awful. I feel dirty. I feel used and manipulated. I feel like I will never be able to fully trust anyone ever again. I will never get remarried. The only reason I could even get out of bed this morning was because I have to be there for my son. I will seek some therapy and hopefully am STD free. I really want to thank you guys for helping me think and feel through this situation. I'm in total shock still I think, because I'm not even angry. I almost feel like an enormous weight has been lifted off of my shoulders. I'm going to focus on the light at the end of the tunnel I guess. Thank you all for your insights, but thanks more to those who told me to question everything. You saved me years of pain, I'm sure. He feel used and manipulated because that is precisely what she did to him. If he wants full custody of his son, then he needs to use every weapon in his arsenal and totally destroy her. He must do for his son and himself. She had her chance. No more. I have to wonder, in my mental replay of the second dialogue with you and your wife, her confession of fabricating the street sounded like something a person would say in a bitter sarcastic tone, given that it followed her furious laying of the smackdown for you initially questioning her story of non-consent versus consent. I don't know man, I just think that her reaction as it was, suggests there is some truth in what she said even if her memory is flawed. It could be she remembers the experience as non-consensual now even if, at the time, she considered it consensual and over time the horror of what happened has set in. Had she exhibited symptoms of PTSD? Does she have horrible dreams and wake up acting as though she were a whole other person or as though she didn't recognize you or this place at all? It is hard to wear the mask of a false personality or identity when you're asleep or have just woken up. In my opinion, you haven't exhausted all options, that is, if you consider divorce to be the very last resort. It may be too late, there may be too much anger and hurt and bad blood and mistrust. But if you can feel any hope left to try to help this person, suggest that she undergo counseling for her experiences. I met my partner back in 2015. We knew each other prior to that year, but it was always through friends or we'd hang out on occasion. Anyways, we moved to the same town in 2015 and got to know each other more. Went on dates, hung out, etc. Things got serious and later had our first child in 2017. Things started getting a little complicated after our child was born. PPD, irritation, work, school, and I felt lost. He tried his hardest and I couldn't get out of my funk. We only had each other and that's what made things difficult. We eventually got through it but we argued a lot in between. We never truly had date nights anymore and all of our arguments stemmed from. We see each other every day, shouldn't that be enough? In 2019, we took a break, but it didn't last long. Fast forward to winter 2021. He accepted a job back in his hometown for the winter season, and I had graduated with my degree and finally was able to get a home for all three of us to live in. The following months were hard, but he managed to still see us every weekend. We did so much together. We hung out, went to dinners, went to fairs, playgrounds, etc. I was so happy and I could see it in our child's eyes. It felt like things were getting better. We would always be so sad when he'd leave on Sundays, until the visits became every other weekend and every two weekends. We started arguing over the phone, and I couldn't understand why. He started sleeping on the couch when he'd come back, and I knew something was wrong. I would ask him and another fight would ensue. Then finally after our child started school he called me one evening, saying that he didn't know how to tell me this news. He was seeing someone else, and that he no longer wanted to be with me anymore. They were on the way to meet his mother and surprised her. Two weeks later he told me that she is pregnant, and he's moved in with her. I'm sure his mother already knew. My heart is shattered, and I can't help but be bitter towards him. I wish he would have told me sooner that he didn't want this, but everything seemed so normal. I honestly wasn't expecting it. It's only been three months since our seven-year relationship ended. I notice he has a lot of anger towards me too. A lot of cursing to me and stating how he never wanted me, and was only there because he had to be for our child. It's always when he is around his new partner. With that, I don't allow my child to see him at her home when I'm constantly disrespected for whatever it is that he hates about me. 
I'm not sure how some of you do it, but this is a punch to the gut. I just want to pack up and leave, away from our friends and his family. I want to go back to school and stay far away, but not sure that's a good thing. His family no longer checks in on us and I think that's a key sign. Our daughter doesn't know any of this and not sure if I should tell her or if she'll comprehend. I keep to myself now. I feel embarrassed that this has happened to me. How long am I going to feel this way? Betrayal. I guess I just needed to rant or ask advice. Either way, I feel like a clown. If you can't even do the bare minimum and be a present and decent father, then absolutely move to where there is a loving support system for her. A child needs healthy love. Her daughter doesn't understand how to verbalize it, but it will negatively impact her if her father doesn't make her a priority. Better no relationship than a poor one. 